Welcome to Accounting in Focus. In this video we're going to talk about allocating dividends between preferred and common shares. So when you're doing this allocation the thing you have got to remember is that preferred shareholders because they're preferred get paid first. So if the company has two types of stock they have a thousand shares of 10 percent one hundred dollar par value preferred stock and one hundred thousand shares of one dollar par value common stock whenever a dividend is going to get paid the preferred shareholders are always going to get paid first so over the last four years the company's paid in 2010 it's paying 15,000 2011 5,000 2012 nothing and 2013 40,000. The problem asks us to calculate how much of each how much would go to each type of stock if the preferred shares were non-cumulative or if the preferred shares were cumulative. So what does that mean cumulative versus non-cumulative? Okay, in a non-cumulative stock, okay? These are this only applies to preferred shares. If the stock is non-cumulative, if the dividend does not get paid or if enough dividend is not paid then the preferred shareholders go without their full dividend okay it does not accumulate in arrears if the shares are cumulative that means that if the preferred shareholders don't get everything they're entitled to the next time a dividend is paid they're going to get what they're entitled to. Now this does not generate a liability for the company. This is just something that they track on paper. So you're never going to see preferred dividends payable for the amount that was not paid um, to the preferred shareholders. Okay, It's just an entry that we kind of keep on the books to keep track of it. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm doing a problem like this is I like to figure out how much the preferred shareholders should get per year. Okay, and this is based off the interest rate on the preferred stock, so in this case it's 10%, multiplied by the par value of the stock. Okay, so if I take $100 times 10%, this will tell me how much the dividend is per share of preferred stock. So that would be $10 per share. Now I need to multiply that $10 per share times the number of shares outstanding. So if I do times 1,000 shares, that's going to equal $10,000. So that means when a dividend is paid, whether it's cumulative or non-cumulative, the first $10,000 is going to go to the preferred shareholders. Okay. So now we can do is now we can start going through. I like using a table for this and this is what I've set up down here. I like using a table because it helps me keep my information organized. Okay, so let's do non-cumulative first. So we know that out of any payment, the preferred shareholders are going to get up to $10,000 first, even if it's non-cumulative. So in 2010, there's a total dividend of fifteen thousand dollars so the first ten thousand would go to the preferred shareholders and if there's anything left over which in this case we do there's five thousand left over that would go to the common shareholders okay in 2011 they only paid the company only paid five thousand in dividends remember we said the first 10,000 paid would go to the preferred shareholders, but the company only paid five, so that means the preferred shareholders would get 5,000, and the common shareholders get nothing. They get zero. Okay. All right, so now 2012, the company paid nothing, so neither class of shareholder gets anything. So we got zeros for both. Okay. Now in 2013, we have a $40,000 dividend. So remember, preferred shareholders get the first 10. 
and then whatever's remaining, the remaining 30,000, is going to go to the common shareholders. Okay, so you always pay preferred first, whether it is non-cumulative or cumulative. The thing that makes the cumulative preferred stock different is that the unpaid amount will accumulate until the next dividend is paid. So even if the preferred shareholders do not get their entire dividend, we are going to keep track of how much they are owed and make sure that they receive that money when the next dividend is paid. That amount that has not been paid is called dividends in arrears. Okay, so you're probably going to see that in some of the problems that you're doing. Okay, so now we can go through and do the calculation for the cumulative preferred stock and see how that looks different. Okay, so 2010 is going to be exactly the same. So we've got $15,000. The first 10 is going to go to the preferred shareholders and 5,000 to common. Okay, so that's exactly the same. Now 2011. So 2011, I'm only paying out $5,000. So that 5,000 is going to go to preferred. And nothing goes to common. But what I like to do when I'm doing this is in parentheses, I like to keep track of the amount that is owed to the preferred shareholder. So in this case, because we're only paying them five, they're owed another five. Okay, so we're right now we have five thousand dollars in arrears that is due to the preferred shareholders. Okay, so now let's go to 2012. Well, 2012 preferred gets zero, and common gets zero. So how much are the preferred shareholders owed now? Well, now they're owed 5,000 from 2011. They didn't receive that money. And they're owed another 10 from 2012. So that's a total amount in arrears of $15,000. Okay, and I like to keep track of the total amount so that way I don't have to worry about adding it up or did I include it, did I not include it. So preferred shareholders owed 15,000. So now let's go to 2013. And in 2013, we're paying out 40,000. So how much is going to go to the preferred shareholders? Well, we owe them 15,000, 5,000 from 2011, another 10,000 from 2012, so that's 15,000 total. That's what we have here in parentheses. Plus 10,000 for 2013. So that would be $25,000 total. 25,000 total. And then that means that only 15,000 would go to common. Okay, so you can kind of see the differences here. So you notice the first three years look very similar, but when we get to year four, the preferred shareholders in the non-cumulative would only get the amount they're due for that year. But under cumulative, they would get everything that they were owed in arrears plus the current year. Okay, and then the common shareholders, they end up getting less money because of it. So if you're a common shareholder and you buy, you know, if you're buying common shares, you want to see, okay, is the are the preferred dividends cumulative or non-cumulative because that could affect how much money you could end up getting if the company doesn't pay dividends every year. Okay, so even if you're a common shareholder, you might want to be concerned with this. So if you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave um, your questions down in the comment section below. Um, if you like this video, please click like, share it with your friends so that they can get help with their accounting as well. Um, study hard, my friends. Have a great day.